and welcome to another teacher talk session tonight and tonight we are going to have our 123rd session with another educator from different part of the world and tonight we are going to have uh, an EFL teacher and a material writers and uh, Sabina Masjiti and when she comes we are going to start our last session again because we had a kind of a te technical problems I really don't know what it happened but the internet connection gone but it's not a problem we are going to start it again with her so let me invite her then we can start One more time. I have invited her. Hi. Okay. Silvina, can hey. you hear me now? <laughs> Here we go, yes. Okay. So, so sorry no about problem. the connection, but uh, I think, uh, can we start again? Is it possible? Yes, sure. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, well. Um, so, okay, yes. so let me take well, from the beginning. Yeah, sure. And so. So oh, I just wanted to say thank you very much for accepting my invitation for the teacher talk, Silvina. And I know that we are all very busy, so I, I would like to ask you the question again quickly. So the first question was about, can you tell us about yourself, please, and a bit about your experiences? Can you tell us about it again? Talk sure, yes. It. Well, I, I was born and raised in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Um, I started teaching English, uh, studying English when I was eight. So by the time I was 15, um, my teacher, by that time, Sandra, offered me to teach kids. So that was my very first encounter uh, uh -huh. with the, the teaching experience. And um, so by the time I finished high school, I wanted to become a professional qualified teacher. So I joined the teaching training college, uh, which took me longer than expected because I was working in administration uh, by that time. So as soon as I finished the teaching training college, which is expected to last four years, but for me it took longer, I started teaching in private and public schools in Buenos Aires. Um, and then I took a bachelor's degree in English. And uh, finally, I took a master's degree in TEFL, teaching English as a foreign language. By that time, I was also teaching in company to adults. And I also got a Fulbright scholarship to teach Spanish in the USA, in a university, for one year. So when I came back from the USA wow. to Argentina, wow. I decided to move to Spain, uh, where I'm currently living. Um, and I, here I teach adults online in company. And I also started my material writing career um, like in 2020 as well, when I took the Nile course on materials development. Um, so that's where I am today. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Silvina. So what was or were your turning point or points in your own education, Silvina? Right. Well, as I mentioned before, when I, when I turned 15, more or less, I started teaching kids. And then I taught some uh, kids from my neighborhood. So that was the very first turning point uh -huh. in my education because I realized I wanted to be a teacher of English. And then the second turning point was in 2020 with the pandemic that I started teaching again after having my kid. And I, I knew about this course on materials development at Nile. Uh, so I took this course and I started my my website, sharing the materials that I was producing, mm -hmm. experimenting, trying, uh, succeeding, uh -huh. failing, but uh, starting my material writing career. Uh, so that that was the second turning point in my education, I let's see. say. Okay, yeah. thank you very much, Silvina. Thank you for sharing with us. And Silvina, I know that you have been teaching for a long time and also you are writing materials and probably kind of, actually, you have used some methodologies and maybe strategies and kind of the ideas while you are teaching and while you are preparing your material so you, are, you have a kind of a met, uh, philosophy about teaching so what is it and what is your philosophy of teaching I think that uh, after teaching for so long our teaching philosophy changes or has mm. changed, you know, because you adapt to your students, you have different contexts to teach different students. I taught in Argentina, I taught in the USA, and I am teaching in Spain. So we adapt, we have to adapt to our students, to their I needs, see. to their interests. Uh -huh. So that's my, my, mainly, my main philosophy, it's whatever works, 
you know so i i, I don't i don't mm -hmm. say that i i i have this kind of approach because i have many approaches i'm an eclectic teacher and i try to to adapt to what my students need perhaps at the beginning i was i stuck to a book and i wanted to finish the book no matter what no didn't care perhaps because i didn't know that my students were learning or not but now yeah. The pace, they, they set the pace, you know, so I, I, I follow the approach they need and I want them to learn. I want them to communicate. So that's my, my teaching see. philosophy. I see. So I teach a lot mm -hmm. of different uh, professionals from different fields. So uh, I center my classes on their needs. I personalize my materials. I personalize my classes as much as possible. Uh, I want to scaffold they're learning, I want to assist them with the language they need. And I work on emergent language. That's mm -hmm. something that I've been doing recently. And I think that we need to provide them with the language they need to communicate in real life contexts and also to assist with the language um, they lack, you know, in class and in real life. So basically that uh, and taking advantage, full advantage of their own knowledge because they know a lot about their professions, about mm -hmm. their life, about everything. So we are not the main source of education. We are yes. learning as we are teaching. So basically that's my, my teaching philosophy. I see, thank you. Thank you very much, Silvina. And Silvina, I know that you are writing materials and you are creating materials for teachers. But uh, my question is related with them. That what's the main purpose? of the materials you are creating for the teachers? Okay, uh, well, they, have, they serve two purposes actually. The very first one is I make them for my own students. So my con I take into account my own context when I make them. So of course I cannot address every single student or teacher's uh, needs. They have to adapt them, they have to modify, yes. delete, add, whatever they need for their own context. So first of all, I spent so much time looking for specific materials for my own students because they come from different fields. Um, in, on the internet, there are plenty, but you spend a lot of time looking for materials for your yeah. classes. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I spend that time looking and searching for materials or sometimes I make them myself. So the main purpose is to address my students' needs. And then I want other teachers uh, to take advantage of my materials to use them and spe especially those teachers who cannot afford to pay um, high quality materials in euro in dollars um, from from those countries that don't have that yeah. those currencies I got it. so uh, and for everyone of course but I was thinking about my Argentinian colleagues for example um, we used to travel around the city all day long teaching and preparing classes for many classes many lessons a day and I know it's time consuming and I know um, all the effort and the dedication it takes to plan one single class. So if I can I help those teachers uh, with some of my lessons, I, I, I'm, I'm very happy about that. You know, I that's understand. very rewarding for me <laughs> and getting feedback from them as well. I'm sure that you're getting really nice feedback from them about your materials. Okay, so thank you. And so my next question again related with your the materials like what specific teaching uh, methodologies or approach do you want to support with your materials well as i said before i want my students to speak so i follow a communicative approach from the very beginning of the lesson i include a warm-up stage with visuals uh, with uh, questions with quotes with any kind of trigger magnet to attract their attention to make them relate to the topic that i want to discuss uh -huh. in that lesson um, to activate schemata which is to activate prior knowledge of the topic and the language and also to relate those, those topics uh, with their own experiences because if we don't That's if important. the materials are not mm -hmm. relatable the purpose is not clear or is not uh, useful for our students. So mm -hmm. uh, that's the main approach that I take all along my lesson. It's communicative. Mm -hmm. They have to, they want to speak. They need to speak for their jobs. So um, we want 
to get to that part, you know. We want them to gain confidence and to be able to communicate effectively in real life. Then, for that purpose, I also follow a lexical approach, which means that I don't give them isolated words or long list of vocabulary to learn. So I put all the language and lexis in context. I provide them with useful phrases instead of useful uh, isolated words. So um, from the very beginning of the lesson, they have a context, something that they can relate to in order to talk about. So the lexical mm -hmm. approach provides that. Then with my other students, I also follow a dogma approach, which is no materials at all, just basically <laughs> speaking, um, or perhaps an article or something they came across on the internet, anything that they bring to the class uh -huh. and their own knowledge, which is precious that they bring to the class. So the DocMe approach allows me to focus on this emergent language that I was talking about. This, yeah. um, uh, we act as facilitators. We are giving them the language they need and helping them build uh, a communication, right. let's say. I got it. And finally, the last one that I really like is TBLT, which stands for Task-Based um, language teaching. So yes, really, all yeah. the lessons follow or, or have a purpose. We are giving them the scaffolding, the support, the language they need to achieve or to get to a final task, to an activation stage. So um, we are like building, scaffolding the lesson and we want them that by the end of the lesson they can produce uh, some conversation, some role play, some discussion. So that is another approach that I really like. You like it and you use in your materials, I see. And uh, actually you have mentioned uh, in some of the, about your materials, but how do you address uh, different learning styles and abilities in your materials? Sometimes, you know, we need to use different materials for our students, which is really important if in a differentiation, the part is really important. Yeah. So how do you address them and how do you adapt them? Well, as I said before, I make material for my teaching context. So then other teachers perhaps have to make some tweaks uh -huh. to my own materials. But as for me, I usually include visual support because we can't address all the multiple intelligences in one single lesson, yes. in one lesson plan, mm -hmm. it's difficult. But at least we can make an effort to include like uh, visuals, or some um, listening for the auditory students, some pair work, group work for those who like to interact with their um, classmates or with the teacher, and also individual work, because some students don't like interacting with the teacher or their classmates. Yeah. They prefer something more individual. So by doing so, I try to um, include these learning um, styles. And also about accessibility, it's important to take into account students with learning disabilities, like when I write materials, the layout should be clear, the information shouldn't be all cluttered, we should leave some white space, use specific font, um, or not avoid using italics, using more bold. So those things have to, t have to be taken into account when we write materials, because not right. only for students okay. with learning mm -hmm. disabilities, but it's for all of us, a clean page, is better for thinking, for, you know, so using the visuals with a purpose, not overloading the page with information, and also not overloading the lesson with grammar or with lexis, you know, picking the most meaningful um, lexis or grammar from a video, for an article, and avoiding cognitive overload. That's another way of helping our students learn, because it's like, see, possible to learn mm -hmm. everything in one single lesson. No, you are right. <laughs> yeah, thank mm -hmm. you very much, Silvina. You know, to writing materials is not easy sometimes, and you need to think, and you need to decide, and you need to, you know, the, get inspiration for writing the material. So, how do you find the inspiration, or let's say, where do you find the inspiration to write your materials? Uh, well, my students is the very first inspiration because they give me ideas um, of what to write about because they need to discuss or to work on certain things so I take that into account and also social media I'm very active on LinkedIn so I follow a lot of uh, business magazines as for in business English lessons I mean or any kind of post can be 
can serve as a springboard for writing a lesson plan or for discussing the topic in class, not I even see. writing. Uh, so life in general, chatting with friends who, who work in other fields, anything can be turned into a lesson plan. That's what I feel. And that's the, the dangerous part about <laughs> starting to write, you know, because it's a kind of addiction because your radar is always on and you have to stop because you, then you have to work on other things that uh, you get paid for. <laughs> <Because> my <laughs> website is completely free. So I need to devote time to writing for, for example, Fluent Eyes that I collaborate with, uh, with Jake Young. He has a platform and I'm a, a freelance writer for him. So I usually pick ideas to, to write for him as well. So yeah, life in general gives you lots of inspiration. I see. Thank you. Thank yeah. you very much, Sidina. Yeah. You just mentioned your web page. So what is it? What is the name of it? Can you tell, tell us? It's eflcreativeideas.com. It's the name of, of my ideas. Instagram. Mm -hmm. Yes. Ah, right. your, the name of the Instagram. Let mm -hmm. me write here. W -W -W. The same name of the website. It, yeah. Nowadays, it, it has ESL. more than 100 uh, lesson plans on both general and business English. EFL Creative Materials. Ideas. Oh, sorry, ideas. Creative ideas .com. Okay, EFL Creative Ideas dot com. Op, is it correct? Check it, please. On um, the screen. Yeah, Can you see? It's good. yeah, okay, yeah, it's good. Yeah. Okay, so this is yeah, this is yeah. Sylvania's web page, and there are mm -hmm. more than hundreds uh, lesson plans about yes. writing or other lessons. Like you can you can check and you can get them. They are all free. You can use them. Yeah, they are free <laughs> and they include that teacher's notes. So, wow. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Some suggestions, some uh, extra challenge or extra support ideas to help our students. Mm -hmm. Yes. I got it. Thank you very mm -hmm. much, Silvina. Thank you. Nice so, question. you know, the writing sometimes, okay, sometimes uh, the teachers or other teachers or the people, let's say, oh, I want to write the materials too. So why, why can't I write some materials? Or well, what can I do to write the materials? They can think about it. Or maybe they want to become a material writer, just like you. So what can teachers or what can other people do to do become a material writer? Is it easy or can they do it? Of course, everyone can do it because we are teachers. We have superpowers. Mm -hmm. You know that. We can yeah, do everything. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> if, if we are passionate about what we do, of course, nothing can stop us. On that so well first of all writing for your students because you have a clear audience a clear context in mind so that's wonderful you have a, and you have a group to pilot your materials because it's important once you write them you try them in class and then you make the necessary changes or once I after I make my materials I try them with my students and sometimes I say, no, this is not working. I have to change this. I have to adapt that. So you edit the materials after trying them for the first time or the second time or the 100th time. And then asking other colleagues to try your materials because perhaps you are sharing the same book with, your, with a colleague and you make a supplementary material for your, one of the units of your book. So you ask them to try them out and to tell you what they think, what, they, what, it, what worked, what didn't work, what can be improved. So asking for feedback, for constructive feedback is um, super important and being open to it. That's crucial if you want to improve your materials. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, and also, well, then you can open to the world and you can uh, start your own blog, as I did. I, nowadays, I have a paid blog, but you can start with a free one, WordPress or Wix. They, they also have the free options. So there is no need to start paying for a premium plan at the beginning. Sure. You can also um, try a community called Freed with three E's, Freed, uh, mm -hmm. which is, um, I'm going to write it. Sure. They are, uh, which is a teacher's community from around the world, and it's free, and you can use other teachers' materials as well as uh, share yours. And now they added the premium part that you can sell your materials there. Oh, so nice. yeah, so you set the price. I don't know how it works, but it's a new uh, feature on the app. So perhaps it's a good opportunity, like a starting point for teachers who want to take some money from their materials. And then sharing them 
uh, on Facebook groups, on LinkedIn. The ELT community is huge on LinkedIn. So everything counts. Perhaps some editor can see them. Perhaps a publisher can see them. And you can get some interesting job offers from the things you, you post and you share. Right? I got it. I got um, it. What's that? You said I couldn't see your... Instant, yeah, because I, I, I didn't have the app. I have to change all my settings on the app. Uh, yeah, thank see, you. You need to change have it. To You're welcome. That. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, right. so, Sylvia, thank you for your ideas about becoming a material writer. So, let me to another question. When you think about probably you have, uh, you have some training sessions or presentations so far about material writing for, for the other teachers or maybe uh, trainers about it. So, when you think about your training sessions or presentation or etc., what was or were the most interesting situations that you faced? So as for material writing, I started with Nile, as I said before, the, the material development course, which is more academic. And it, really, the, the people that uh, take that course are experienced uh -huh. material writers, so you can learn from them a lot. Um, you read a lot of interesting theory about material development. Then I took John Hughes' material writing course, you know him? Of course, he's really and, good at it. And mm -hmm. now the good news is that he joined, well, or, or Catherine Billsborough and John Hughes are giving a course together, and both of them Wonderful. are highly recommended people, professionals. They have vast experience uh, in material writing. So they started the first course at the beginning of 2023, and now they are starting another one in September. Wow. and another one next year. Mm -hmm. So for those mm -hmm. teachers who are interested in, in gaining some knowledge, uh, some getting some feedback from these two amazing material writers and teachers um, and teacher trainers, I mean, they, they are awesome. You can enroll. They are uh, now um, advertising their course in September. So that's great for those teachers who want to start their career. Um, and then, last but not least, I finished another course last Friday on how to write inclusive ELT materials, which was given by Lottie Galpin. She is uh, a uh -huh. DEI consultant. DEI stands for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. And she uh, developed an, a 10-week course on inclusive materials, and I wow. finished it last Friday. It was super insightful, eye-opening, and very interesting to make more inclusive materials, to represent marginalized groups, to represent age, these people with disabilities. I mean, uh, that super, super recommended as well. It's what? not about writing Therefore. per se. So if you are already writing your materials, you, can, uh, you won't get how to write materials, you know, the, the techniques, or, but you will get how to make them inclusive. So that's a great compliment uh, for, for teachers and material writers what? as well. Wonderful. Thank you very much for uh, suggesting and support then telling us about them. Yeah. And uh, Sylvina, so as you know that writing a material is not an easy thing and you need to stay updated about your materials. And you know the technology and the developments are really, you know, improving quickly as we know that. So and how do you stay updated with the latest development and trends in English language teaching and how do you adapt them to your materials? It's so difficult for me because I don't like technology very much. Actually, I didn't <laughs> have Instagram till this moment that you invited me to this uh, session. So I, I tried to. I, I haven't tried ChatGPT yet. You know, everyone is talking about that, but I, I haven't tried it myself yet. So as I have, I teach adults, and they are already really motivated to learn because they need to to use the language in their businesses, in their jobs. I don't need to add anything special in my classes other than uh, communication, the lesson plans. So I don't usually use tools or, or a lot of technology in the classes, you know, because rather than spending time uh, on, on exploring tools myself, I spend time on reading uh, about how to help them decode listening, how to help them develop uh, listening mm -hmm. or pronunciation skills, how to uh, work on emergent language. So at this moment, I am really into books yeah. rather than technology. And I want to develop myself. It's useful for me as well as a, as a learner 
to learn about those things because we are also learners. So technology is not one of my priorities, but I'm learning how to use Adobe InDesign, which is a uh -huh. program to write high quality lesson plans. Uh, that's the, the tool that Fluentize uses, and that's the one that I need to start using um, in the future. So that's something I am doing right now, a training I on see. InDesign. But um, yeah, that's my, mm -hmm. <laughs> my, I, my I thought understand. about technology, you know. I see. Thank, yeah. thank you. Thank you very much, mm -hmm. Tulina, for sharing with us. And if, if, if I'm not, you are also a member of LinkedIn, and you are using it very effectively. So how can LinkedIn help uh, ELT professionals building a strong community? Well, it's important to, if you're a material writer or you're starting, to share your material there because that's the first thing I started doing as soon as I started my website. So that helped me build a community and, and follow authors and writers and, and publishers. So not only because I wanted to spread my materials, but also mm -hmm. because I want to know uh, what the other people are doing. I so um, I, I know about webinars, I know about podcasts, I, I know about a lot of CPD, continuous professional development that is taking place. And most of the events are free. Some of them are paid, which are really worth it, like the courses that I mentioned before. But yes. uh, there are a lot of accessible um, CPD sessions for us. So that's the way in which I use LinkedIn, not only to share, but also to, to keep updated mm -hmm. on these things. Mm -hmm. And when you, uh, you make kind of friends with the LinkedIn members, and you connect with people from a lot of different teaching backgrounds, nice. and that's See. another thing mm -hmm. that I recommend, joining other people to collaborate with when you make materials. Because uh, it's so enriching to make a lesson plan together with someone who teaches in a completely different context from yours. You know, yeah. you learn a lot, and you learn how to adapt, how to address those groups, those uh, contexts. So it's really enriching. And then if you attend conferences in person, like um, IATEFL or TISOL or Innovate ELT in Barcelona, then you can meet some of those people in person. That happened to me last year mm -hmm. and this year. So you become a great community and we support each other. It's not a competition, you know, to see who makes the best materials or who has the most students. So we help each other and that's amazing about our community. I got it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Silvina, mm. for sharing with us. That's really important. And let's move to another question related actually in your classes. And you know, the, the communication and interactions during the lessons, especially ab among the students, really important for us. Mm -hmm. So how do you encourage and foster effective communication and interaction among students in your classes? First of all, I think it's important to create a safe environment, uh, a place in which students feel uh, comfortable, uh, respected, included, represented. So that's the key to uh -huh. allowing them or, or, or for them to be able to speak, you know, because if they feel like intimidated or they don't feel comfortable or they feel um, perhaps um, criticized, you know, that is not okay. So the first thing is, is to, to set some, if you teach a group, we set some common rules and especially mixed ability classes in which you have all different levels and some of them don't want to speak because they don't feel confident enough uh, yeah. And others who really know how to say something speak a lot or too much compared to the others. So it's difficult yes. to keep a balance and to make the others feel comfortable to speak. Um, so perhaps a task differentiation, as you said before, really helps um, tackle this issue of um, mixed ability classes. I, I don't teach large groups. I only teach five, six, ten students tops. So it's easier. So the smaller the group, the easier it is to, to differentiate your tasks or to allow everyone to speak. But I can imagine that when you teach like 25, 30 or more students, that's a challenge. I know that many teachers who are watching would say, yes, uh -huh. I teach 20, 30, 40. So yes, I know what you mean, but I, I can't. So perhaps um, making small groups, 
uh, pairing them with um, students at the same level or trying different things. Sometimes when you, when you get students from the same level together, they feel more comfortable to speak and they help each other because they know how it feels. But at the same time, uh, having students from mixed ability levels together also helps the others assist with language, mediate, uh -huh. negotiate. So it's trial and error. Teaching is trial and error. So uh, we need to that to provide a safe environment and to to try pair group and then group work uh, and see what happens. And I'm um, trying to ask lower level students for easier tasks and, and so on and challenging more the others. But at the same time, we don't want the others, the lower level students to feel frustrated because they can't produce or we don't want uh -huh. the others, the higher level to feel that it's not challenging enough. So it's difficult, but I think that, um, I think it's possible. Mm -hmm. I am sure it is. By, of yeah. course, of course. Thank you. Thank you very much, Silvina. And by the way, time flies, you know, just a couple of questions left, Silvina. <laughs> and <laughs> so I hope you are not boring so far, so good. How's it going? Enjoying it? No, it's great. Okay. I speak a Thank lot. You. you know, it's difficult right. for me to stop speaking. <laughs> great, because we are teachers, you know, we, we are teachers, yeah. we talk a lot. We like talking. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, so, awesome. of course. And as a material writer or a teacher, how do you see yourself in 10 years? Will you still be a trainer, material writer, or you are going to try another jobs? No, I, I can't picture myself. Um, uh, being a different thing. I used to be uh, to work in administration and, and no, I, I am a teacher. I hope I'll be teaching in 10 years and probably writing as well, but I'll be raising a, a teenage boy. So I think that's the most challenging thing that I can think about right now. <laughs> <laughs> raising a teenager. So let's see what happens. Let's talk in 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we will see. We will see. <laughs> okay, yeah. Serena, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> And Silvina, sometimes we think that, and you know, in some situations we want to have kind of a superpowers. Oh, I wish I could have that power so I can, I could do whatever I want, or I could do, do that, I could do this, I could do that. So when you think about yourself, if you could have one superpower to use in the classroom, and what would it be and how would it help? Well, that was a difficult question, but I think that I would, <laughs> I would try to make fossilized mistakes disappear you know these mistakes that we keep correcting over and over like yeah. people is how many times have you corrected people is in your class i mean thousands <laughs> millions so yeah, perhaps bro, if we had this quick. superpower we would like put some spell there and, and make those fossilized mistakes disappear and even my own mistakes of course we make mistakes when we speak so i can use those powers for myself as well you know to say no it's not people this it's people are and you have kind of a something coming from you or some knowledge oh no i'm wrong it's and self-correction self-correction is great when our students self-correct or correct themselves you realize that they are learning that they remember what we we say so we have to be persistent exactly. that's another mm -hmm. superpower ah, wonderful. <laughs> patience well, thank you thank you very much Silvina. Yeah. <laughs> okay so Silvina, now let's move to another question think that or so, like imagine that we finish the interview and you go out home and find a lottery ticket which ends up with winning 10 million dollars what would you do well i think that everyone or most of the people would say i would travel around the world that's a typical <laughs> but my concern is that if we don't take care of our planet there is no world to travel by you know so probably i would invest that in something related to climate change nice. because we are getting it tougher so i know it's not the ideal answer but I think that it's something we need to talk about and to do something about. So probably investing in something about climate change. That would be, mm -hmm. or education. Mm -hmm. And then I can mm -hmm. travel around the world, of course. But first <laughs> of all, we need to take care of it. Uh, yeah. Definitely. So we need to yeah. take care of our world. So and then we yeah. can we can travel around. Of it. Thank yeah. you. Thank you very right. much, Silvina. Okay, <laughs> Silvina. And, almost, and here is the last question. I'm going to ask you my last question, which is a difficult one. Are you ready for it? Mm, of course. <laughs> what is your motto? Well, that was difficult too because I, I didn't know what to say, but I, I came across 
uh, a, a nice exp a nice phrase on Facebook by Ron Moraine, who is another person that we should follow on LinkedIn. And he shared a phrase by Robert uh, Mihan, who is an educator from the USA, who said, life as a teacher begins the day you realize you are always a learner. And we are mm, lifelong learners nice. as teachers. Yeah, exactly. If we think like that. that we know everything, we are wrong. You know, Definitely. so we not only we learn from a uh, methodology, we learn the language, uh, we learn um, everything. But from our own experience, we reflect and we learn from our teaching practice. But we should also learn from our students, from everything they bring to our class, not only the language, but their emotions, their knowledge, everything. Yeah, that's important. So that's that's the most important thing to keep learning and to keep improving exactly. our practices. Exactly. Yeah. Can, can can we get the the motto again, if it's possible? Yeah, life as a teacher begins the day you realize you are always a learner. Wonderful, really, that's mm -hmm. really important. Like I always say that, like as a as a person, also I use it. If you stop, if you stop learning, you stop teaching. As a teacher, I always use it. It's really also important. Yeah, so yeah. You know, like lifelong right. learners. Thank right. you. But All I, right. I have a mm -hmm. question. I have a question for you. For me. When? Oh. Yeah. When will you be interviewed? Because you've been interviewing a lot of teachers, and when is your turn? Uh, uh, I I did, I did, but not in this platform. I mm. did in other platforms. I I have given interview. Okay. I did interview. Yeah, and I different well, uh, platforms. You should be interviewed. Here, here, not yet. Yeah. Here, not yet. Maybe in the future. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe for the like the, the 200, yeah, yeah, they are. Yeah, maybe for the 200. I'm keeping myself for the 200 session. Of course, <laughs> get ready to answer all these questions. I I, I, I offer myself to, to interview you if you want to. Sure, I would be happy not? to. <laughs> <laughs> we, will, we, we can do that, not a problem. Whenever you want, we can do that. If it's right. as, if you arrange the time, we can do that. All right, so that's, that's all my questions, uh, Selvina. And uh, thank you very much. But before ending our live sessions, would you like to add anything else? No. Well, thank you for this opportunity. And I hope everyone is fine. Uh, I hope people who are in the North Hemisphere are OK with this heat and people in the South with the cold. So take care. Uh, and well, let's keep teaching and spreading our knowledge and passion. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sylvia. And I would like to say one more time for being with us here and sharing your ideas and giving about your giving your suggestions. And the most important thing is your time. You spend your time here with us. Thank you very much. One more time. It's been a pleasure. Okay. And Sylvina Maschiti was with us here with the Teacher Talks 123. So we we had a really fruitful session with her. And we are going to be here next week on the same day at the same time as you know that every Monday at 9 p.m. Uh, for Turkey's time. So be careful about it. And then until next time, take care of yourselves and take care of yourself, Sylvina. And thank you very you much too. one more time. Bye-bye, everybody. And peace, bye -bye. everybody. Bye. That's